On this episode of Redefine, I speak with artist and humanitarian Jeremy Cowart about his newest work and the ups and downs of massive tour photography. Adorama TV presents The Redefine Show with Tamara Lackey, where she talks with creatives who make it all work, bringing their best creative and business tips to you, along with fresh ideas and equipment favorites. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? Good, Good. You just got back from Haiti. I did. Like just? Yeah. Like I hours flew, ago? I flew straight from Haiti to Vegas. Right. Yeah. How was that for you? Insane. Especially because I got on the plane from Miami and sat next to a lady that was full of new plastic surgery. You know, coming straight from, you know, poverty. It was interesting. Oh, because so, yeah. she was coming to Vegas. Yeah. Did you comment <laughs> to her? I did not. I mm. just, lots of awkward stares. You just so. emotionally judged her and, mm, and then carried yes, on. Yes, yes, Okay, <laughs> good. Yeah. Tell me about your connection to Haiti. Like, it's pretty significant <clears throat> now. Like, it is. especially now. Yeah, especially now. Um, now, my first trip was right after the earthquake, and it uh, simply stemmed from watching the media portray it in a really um, just uh, inhumane kind of look at all the buildings, look at all the dead people. There's no story to it. So I went down there and decided to do my own story called Voices of Haiti, and I just simply gave people found pieces of rubble and took down art supplies and let them write almost like a tweet-sized thought on found rubble and did a photo series of that. And, uh, and I've been back a few times since. So now uh, my wife and I are officially adopting from Haiti. It's pretty crazy. That's so, very crazy. So we're very connected to Haiti, and uh, we met our future children this weekend. Eight-month-old um, and 18-month-old? Mm -hmm. Yeah, boy and a girl. And so how much time did you get to spend with them? Uh, four days. We get to spend the weekend with them, so it was wow. amazing. And surreal. And very surreal. And really sad, because you bond with them, then you have to leave them again, and you're reinforcing that whole abandonment thing, so it's hard. It's yeah. Heavy, it's heavy stuff. That is yeah. kind of one of the craziest things about international adoption. That and also um, the fact that I think what a lot of people don't talk about, too, is that you have this human nature to protect yourself a little bit mm -hmm. from being too mm -hmm. crazy about them, because what if this doesn't work out? Right, exactly. Yeah, we've already had to learn that lesson a couple times, so... Right, because your whole process mm -hmm. has not been that seamless yet, right. and it never is. Yeah. And then you're going, you're going to be doing another uh, project soon with Uganda, correct? Mm -hmm. I'm, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to Uganda to work with former child soldiers uh, who were forced to do terrible things. Um, but I have a, some friends in Nashville are doing art therapy with them, so they're going over there and painting and drawing and telling, painting their past and then painting the, the hopes of their future. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going over there to collaborate with them and kind of amplify their voices and turn their art and their portraits and their stories into a traveling exhibit and an iPad book and we're doing a documentary and so it's like a full on <laughs> media amazing. media thing with these with these kids. So now I know um, we've talked before about projects like these and funding. <clears throat> what, mm -hmm. is, what is your take on that? Gosh, I'm so new to the funding world and I'm not good at it. So I'm learning learning the hard way that funding is very hard. Yeah, especially with projects that are nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Very and hard. are you? Uh, is this something where they've already established the funding for it, or? No, I mean we're, we launched a uh, Indiegogo campaign, which is essentially Kickstarter. So we're trying to raise money as we speak right now um, to make it happen. Yeah. So. And I find that's a common challenge because people have these great ideas to do amazing work mm -hmm. like that, and then get tripped up, and sometimes that discouragement mm -hmm. can knock the whole thing back because it's already a big effort. Mm -hmm. And it'd be lovely if there were something in place that kind of said, hey, if you've got a golden idea, mm -hmm. you know, and that's yeah. what you're saying Indiegogo is? Yeah, I mean, it's essentially the same as Kickstarter. You launch an idea and you get your friends to help fund it, but uh, it's hard. It's a hard campaign, so we'll see. ADD. Yes. <laughs> do you have it? I think I do. I've never officially been diagnosed, but I'm pretty sure by talking to people who have been that I am as well. Okay, so can you look into my eyes? <laughs> yeah. It's too weird, it's isn't hard. it? It's hard. Like, yeah. what else do you want to look at? The lights, the shininess? Yeah, the lights, uh, anything. <laughs> anything. Yeah. And, but it works for you. Like, it's such, it, <clears> like, <throat> looking at your career, the, the pace and the breath and uh, the frenetic feel of it sometimes from the outside, mm -hmm. it, it appears to be, be very successful for you. I guess so, yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I have really funny stories of, you know, I've driven once four hours to the wrong city, I'm trying to go to Atlanta, and I drove four hours the other direction to Knoxville. <laughs> but it's in those moments where I'm being... Uh, Wait a minute, so you drove for four hours not knowing that you weren't going in the right place? Right. yeah. <laughs> oh, so what'd you do when you got there? Uh, just, you know, come away. Damn! Wipe. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, really, just really mad at myself. But it's in those moments where I'm doing something really stupid that I'm brainstorming. Yeah. I'm having these ideas for something bigger. And 
also once bought the same magazine twice in a row within a 10 minute span uh, and had no idea until I sat down and opened my bag and I had the same two magazines. You know? mm. So I'm not so. a doctor. <laughs> I think that's a safe diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. Probably Would you take so. medication for it? I don't know. A lot of people do, but I'm too afraid of affecting what works about the it. The creative you know? process, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. How do you so. sleep? Um, sometimes well, sometimes not. When I'm brainstorming, I can't sleep. And those are usually when the ideas hit. And I use Evernote, the app. Yes. Uh, love I'm, all, I'm always typing into Evernote in the bed late at night, brainstorming. <laughs> That's surprisingly unhot. <laughs> <laughs> late at night when I'm in bed, mm, Evernote. <laughs> Folder after folder after folder. Oh, so many tags. It's so <laughs> romantic. Yeah. Um, so speaking of the breadth of your career, which is very interesting, um, the uh, you were you toured kind of back to back ish with mm -hmm. Britney Spears for three months, mm -hmm. and yeah. then well, a wholly different project. Yeah, Passion was first. It was a, a, a Christian organization out of Atlanta. So two. Oh, it was reversed. Yeah, toured with them for three months around the world and then toured with Britney Spears around the country for three months. Okay, so what were you doing with Passion? Just uh, shooting everything. It was really a really fascinating project because I was shooting concerts for them. I was shooting, I had to document the cities. So landscapes, buildings, sky rises, um, shooting portraits. I was like every photographer in one trip. It was really interesting. And the, and the point of the whole trip was? <clears throat> Just to document. We, we did a book uh, after that called Awakening. Mm -hmm. And so I was shooting the book uh, for that whole thing. Um, and so it was really an amazing experience. And Brittany, not so much. Brittany, not so much. What does that mean? Well, it has, has nothing to do with Brittany. Um, I mean, there were 250 people on the tour. So this is a massive thing. But essentially, I was, I was brought on to document her life and her story, which sounded amazing. But then I ended up, due to politics and different things, just shooting the concerts. Which to me, shooting the same concert for three months is like signing up to get punched in the face for two hours a night. <laughs> So I, I hate concerts, and so it was... <laughs> you hate concerts? Yeah. I mean, I hate shooting concerts. If it's one concert and the lighting is good and things are interesting, then yes, it's fun. But shooting the same show with the same dance moves, the same lighting, the same wardrobe, the same everything the same... The same spontaneous ad-libbing? For, for three months every night? Mm -hmm. No, it's not, it's not fun. So you wouldn't and, do it again? And don't hear me that I'm like, I was very thankful for the opportunity. But still, it was like, as a creative person, it was miserable. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was not fun. So it has nothing to do with Britney or any of that. It was just the fact that I was shooting the same show every night. So what you're saying is you don't like Britney Spears. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> just take that clip. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, uh, was, how many shows in were you just kind of like, oh, God, what am I doing? About three. <laughs> wow, that's fast. Yeah. 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 Well, I imagine, because it's just so much, um, it's just, it feels so scripted. Like, I, I often mm. think that when I'm out shooting, um, I, I feel like if I don't switch it up, I'm mm -hmm. going to lose my mind, regardless yeah. of what the client needs. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're, so there's always that compromising. You're doing what mm -hmm. they need, and you're doing a little bit of what you need. And I think about that all the time. Like if you were playing in concert for 40 years, mm -hmm. and you had to sing, you know, another Rolling Stone cover exactly oh how everyone wants to hear it. How do yeah. you do that? Where do you pull that from? Yeah, if I were a musician, I've always had that thought. Like I would hate to play songs that were hits that I wrote 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, it'd be miserable. And nobody wants to hear the new stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like, here's some stuff for a new exactly. album. Ah. Yeah, exactly. So I would be, I couldn't do it. Okay, so if you could not <clears throat> be any type of artist, mm -hmm. any type, what else would you be doing? Oh, uh, I would be any type of artist. Any type of artist. Well, no one's ever asked that question. No one, well done. Um, <laughs> I have a secret fascination with hip hop dancing, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> you want to dance for us? <laughs> Totally. Yeah, I was hoping you would ask. What kind of dancing, specifically? Uh, hip hop, like break, break, break dancing. Yeah, I love it. Could you dance on this? Oh, of course. Okay. Should we do it right um, now? Maybe in a minute. Okay. Uh, I want to see a, how far you I, take this. I have fascinations with uh, snowboarding and drumming, music, obviously, guitar playing. Uh, but the funny thing is, is I, when I look at surfing and snowboarding and drumming and dancing and shooting, even though those other things aren't art, there's a freedom that runs through all of them. Yeah, you know, you that's think the about connection. like it's this freedom, it's this free-flowing form of expression that I think still runs through all of those yeah. things. How many people are you partnering with right now? A lot. <laughs> like roughly, what would you guess? Gosh, 
30, I don't know, 20, 30. Just on all the different projects. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of collaboration. Mm -hmm. And your wife helps you out with a lot of this stuff, right? She does, she produces photo shoots and she's my ultimate idea bouncer. You know, I, knew, I know that when my wife approves of an idea that I've got something. Yeah. Usually, you know, she's just, she's not like a fan. She didn't marry me for my whatever. She married oh, I've seen me your for, high school picture together. She married me for me, yes. And so uh, it's, it's nice to have that honest feedback. Mm -hmm. so. It's been how, 15 years? 13 married, 16 together. Got it. Yeah. All right, right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And like, love of your life. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. We've been Best together friend. more than half of our lives now. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Did you ever, did you know like right away, like done with her? I did. Within two weeks, I was telling friends that I met my wife. <laughs> so. Did that freak her out or was she like, hey, baby? I think she was kind of the same way. It was pretty mutual. <laughs> That's what he's saying. She was into me too. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. And are you gonna four kids now? Are you staying with four? Who knows? Well, could you? What, how how big could you see your family? I mean, I gosh, I don't know. I wouldn't want to go more than five. We used to say three, then it was four. But you know, once you start adopting, you start falling in love with these kids. I know, and it's the possibility too. Mm -hmm. Like I, I remember it being in Ethiopia, thinking, oh, like you just see family different. Mm -hmm. Like you just see the idea of. It, my latest book was all about the the idea that I started recognizing that when you're doing family ph photography, it used to be the most boring thing I shot mm -hmm. for me. Um, and now it's the idea of that belonging, mm -hmm. being connected in a family, mm -hmm. is something we are stupidly taking for granted. Mm -hmm. like, no doubt. And it's such a, it's such a, it, I don't know, we take it as a birthright. Mm -hmm. Like if you're born into a family, you assume that's just what it is and you get annoyed with people and this and that and all the little petty things. Right. And then you look outside and saying, wow, to be alone. Mm -hmm. And you're not alone, like yeah. you're surrounded. But there's a loneliness sometimes in that, mm -hmm. in that who do I belong to? Yeah, the other day I tweeted, uh, you know, family goodbyes at the airport always suck or something like that. And somebody said, just be thankful we have somebody to say goodbye to. Mm. I was like, yes, very true. Good point. You know, so. Depressing point. Depressing point. So sad. <laughs> Join us next time for a very interesting part two of our talk with Jeremy Cowart. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.